There's this serious talk on domestic abuse and violence that has been trending on social media for about a week now. It started over the weekend after the death of a Nigerian gospel singer who died due to domestic violence. And th that weekend was kind of busy for me. My husband and I were in and out and I was also invited to speak at a meeting. And so I really did not get the chance to follow up on what was going on. And I'm not the type to just jump and comment or post something just because it is trending it's going viral and so at the beginning of this week i got the chance to kind of listen to some people watch some videos read some posts and comments that people made and i got a picture of what was going on and so based on that um the message i had just shared that weekend which was called to lead kind of came back to me and you know I had this one burden in my heart which is what I want to share with us in this video today and I really plead with you to watch it to the end before you walk away with a half-baked information or you jump to conclusions and comments on things that you have not heard the whole story so um, this is what I want to share from my heart today whenever there's a problem be it at a personal or a national level there are usually three ways that people respond to it either there are a group of people who either ignore it or the people who will grumble and complain about it over and over and do nothing or the people who will take steps to solve it in the past domestic violence was ignored like it was not there and then an era came where people could not take it anymore they started to grumble and complain and retaliate and then the internet even made that voice more louder because some of the complaining and the grumbling that was happening on kitchen tables and in little corners now made it to the public eye and so that voice became louder but in today's video I just want to challenge us that we should push ourselves even to the third stage which is trying to look for practical solutions to these problems we are all leaders and we can contribute in one way or the other the little that you bring to the table counts a lot remember that the ocean is made up of little drops of water but I want to particularly call on our leaders who believe that they have a special anointing and they have been called to speak to marriages and to relationships or people who have had formal training in counseling and who believe that they can speak to marriages and relationships or even people who have gone through abuse who have gone through certain experiences and have healed and now they have this burden within them to reach out and help others from this healed place it is this group of people that i am really pleading with that it is time to rise up pray study research and come up with solutions that are not filtered through religion culture worldly standards solutions that are holistic i don't think this is the time to be angry and defensive if you enjoy the attention and privileges that comes with leadership then you should also be ready to take responsibility when tough questions are asked you know i saw comments where people were like how dare you ask me this question or ask him or her that question and i was like we can't it, it a true leader should not say how dare you ask me this question because one of the greatest qualities of a good leader is your ability to listen effectively listening not just to respond but listening to understand listening before you speak a leader should be far ahead enough to lead that's why I said study to show yourself approved but a leader should equally be close enough to understand understand the people that you are leading you should be able to empathize with them see where they are coming from empathy is not compromise you should be able to understand them because when you understand when you listen to them sorry you gain understanding when you gain understanding you gain wisdom and with wisdom you are able to come up with practical ways that can really solve the problem it's true that some people are going to ask in horrible ways you know when I went through the comments I could see people who ask questions you know very genuinely like you know what I've experienced this somebody has experienced that and experienced this over here what do we really do and there are other people who you know will ask the question as though they're setting a trap for you like okay let me hear what you're gonna say right here it's they, they, they could care less the solution to the problem is they're just happy having that argument and there are yet other people who are in the middle of 
that abuse they are angry they are bitter and they have no time to sugarcoat their question they are ready to just vomit bile you know out there on you but a, a good leader and a, by the way i'm not talking about trolls here internet trolls here because those ones are just idle people who happen to have a keyboard in front of them and sometimes they're not sure what they're typing i'm talking about real people here who are hurting and they're unable to bring themselves to a place where they'll be sugarcoating what they want to say a good leader should be able to effectively listen to these people not just to respond but to understand them and with understanding you will gain wisdom and with wisdom you'll be able to come up with strategies and solutions that can really solve the problem now please remember that domestic abuse is a very very complex thing it has layers upon layers upon layers there are people who are in an abusive relationship they have no clue that they are in one because they have never seen it any other way and there are some who know that they are in an abusive relationship but they are just not sure how to get help and there are yet some who know how to get help, they know where to get it, but they just will not reach out to get that help. Either because of their ego, as a man, how am I going to say that I'm being abused by a woman? And as a woman, how am I going to say that I was unable to handle my relationship or handle my marriage? And how am I going to, you know, make everybody know that <laughs> things are not going well? How are we going to take our selfie <laughs> for, for social media? And so they hold back. And some people, it may not just be ego, but it is the stigma, you know, that is attached to a relationship that is on the rocks like right like it's you are a failure because you're having issues in your relationship and so they do not reach out for help and there are yet another group of people who actually reach out for help but then they get this horrible counsel that they take back home and make things worse and what about the abusers i looked and i didn't really see posts that people have put up also addressing the perpetrators we are forgetting that this is a whole group of people that if we're only here talking about the victims and yet there are some other ones breeding in our homes you know to abuse other people abuse other men and women tomorrow you know somebody could be going through a traumatic childhood situation now that has nothing to do with domestic violence but that translates tomorrow that that trauma or that thing that made them feel small translates tomorrow by them turning to bullies and looking down on and pouncing on their wives or their husbands because that is how they gain their respect i'm just trying for you to see the complexity of this um um this abuse this domestic abuse and to see that it's we really need to listen to the different stories the versions the scenarios so that we can gain understanding and wisdom so that we are able to bring a solution that will really solve the problem. Now, let me conclude with something I think is very important that we all hear this before we clog out of this video. When I say that we all should be a part of the solution, I'm not referring or I'm not now saying that we should run to our different social media platforms and start to type and make videos and everything. Yes, do it if that is what you feel in your heart and you think that is how you can bring about the solution. You know, there are always people who are experts in certain area. They have done tons and tons of counseling. They have, you know, they have seen, they have had experience in certain things. And so when those kind of topics pop up on social media, they are quick because they are ready. They know what to say and how to address such situations. But I've also seen where at times people rush to say things and to address things when they have not yet taken a moment to think. I say this because I saw where people posted five different contradicting posts within one day, right? You post one thing and then you watch this video and you think differently, then you go and put another post. And then you read something over there, you think differently, and then you go and put another post. At the end of the day, you are contradicting yourself. What do you want people to gain out of all of that? You know, there's this interpretation that if you are silent, then you are sitting on the fence. If you are silent, then you are naive. And while there is truth in that, it's not always the case. You know, there are times that you can also, listening is also wisdom. You know, you may be listening more to the complaints to gain understanding, or sometimes you could be listening to people who are experts in that field to also gain understanding and gain some wisdom. Or you could be listening to some of the solutions that are being put out there, and then you are also 
reasoning it out also and applying your own wisdom to some of those solutions that are coming in. There's this thing where people want to feel like if I don't say something, then I'm going to look like I'm incompetent. I'll feel like I, I you know, it's like leaders today, we find it difficult to say that, um, you know what, I don't know the answer to this one yet. And it's okay, you know, which CEO of any company will say that they have never been stumped by a question or a problem. You know, that CEO can walk in that morning and they tell them something that is happening and they're like oh my goodness how do we go about this but yes they're going to at least come address the people and say okay I've heard I know what's going on let's calm down or let's do this for now and then they get to work and start to figure out how are we going to solve this problem and that is very very okay you are not any less of a CEO because you were not ready with an answer right there and then let us we have made a lot of things about ourselves and our egos and that is why at times we do not sit down and think and gain wisdom and understanding before we speak. And who also says that your solution must be on social media? Your, the, 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 your contribution to the solution to this problem must be somewhere typed on social media. Let me tell you, uh, there are little groups that I saw just within this week that did a great work addressing some things and because these were small groups people were able to open up honestly and even share personal things and be able to get help something they would not be able to do on a big public platform and so if somebody goes and gives their voice and their solution and and their and their own counsel there they are part of the solution take off that pressure that you must always comment and address you know every single thing that is trending Sometimes it may not even be your place to address it. Sometimes it may be your place to address it, but it's not the right time to address it. Sometimes it may be the right time to address it, but you choose to address it in another way. I've always said for me that if something that I'm going to say and do is going to be a step into the solution, I would. But if it's just going to end at just my opinion, then I have the choice to either share that opinion or not to share that opinion or to share it here and not here. You should apply wisdom, understanding when it comes to things like that. And so as I'm challenging all of us to be a part of the solution, think. Let me tell you just one little example. One of the nights after I'd listened to a certain video concerning this um, violence, I have this thing where I always check my kids before I go to bed. And I walked into my daughter's room and I saw her lying down and sleeping. And there was this thought in my mind, oh my goodness, you know, I'm working so hard raising up this girl. What if tomorrow she, f she finds herself in an abusive relationship? And there were two things that came up. Will she know what to do? And then another thing was like, would she even come up to me? Because I heard a lot of uh, things also out there of, did the family even know? So I was like, would she be? I know those are questions I'm asking myself that are important questions so that I can now begin to look for answers that will make me be a part of the solution. I was like, how is my relationship with my daughter that she can be able to tell me even when she's going through the most you know whatever in her life and I looked at my boys and I thought the same way I also thought how am I how am I raising them how am I raising them you know is there something I'm doing that can traumatize them can strip them of their self-esteem and tomorrow they feel that they can gain that self-esteem by being bullies by insulting or by climbing on somebody you know so that alone, the fact that I asked myself those questions and I started to think and look through my parenting styles, that is a solution that I'm bringing. So when I encourage us to be a part of the solution, I don't necessarily mean that you should go and start a ministry or you should go and put anything on social media. That may be all that it takes for you. We have different areas of expertise. We have different areas of knowledge and experience. We have different platforms where we operate. You can always ask yourself, how can I be a part of the solution? Maybe you being a part of the solution is even just giving a listening ear to somebody and that is all. Some people, maybe you only have to offer a shoulder for somebody to cry on. And then after that, you direct them to where they can find that solution. 
Again, like I said, little drops of water make the ocean. But I quickly turned this deep dark thought into a positive one, which is something I always do when I'm having a dark thought. I like to spin it around and think differently. And so immediately I said, you know, what if my kids really want to experience the love of a man or a woman and they are blessed with an amazing man or woman that loves them and they want to build an amazing family? Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? It would be a beautiful thing. And so if I am raising her and having in mind that, you know, there may be abusive relationships tomorrow, I should also raise them, keeping in mind that there are beautiful relationships out there, starting from mine at home. So I would like to end this video also spinning it on a positive note that marriage is good marriage is beautiful it's a beautiful thing i would be a hypocrite if i am happily married and then i am telling every other girl out there that don't do it don't try it it's horrible it's horrible i would be a hypocrite i think we should just present it openly and factual that you know what there are abusive men and women out there and you may find yourself in an abusive relationship and if you find yourself in one this is what to do which is what i'm saying we should be a part of that solution but we should also be able to present that there are beautiful homes and beautiful marriages and the best way to do that is to be examples ourselves in our own homes and in our own relationships so that the younger generation can see that marriage is a beautiful thing i do not think that we will get our results by using fear we'll get our results by by scaring people by making people feel like oh my goodness I, I don't think we're going to I think we will be creating the same thing we're trying to destroy or we're trying to end if we come from the place of our own personal biases and bitterness so this is my own little contribution to what's presently going on I hope I wasn't just rambling I hope that I've been able to challenge us not to ignore things when they come up but to be reminded that silence does not always mean that you have ignored something or that you're sitting on the fence and also that we should not just grumble and complain it is true that we have to call things out we have to speak up and so Solutions start from there. If somebody is not complaining, grumbling, or pointing out something, nobody will think of a solution. So it has its place. But if we dwell and we stay only at complaining, nothing will ever be done. Let us push ourselves, all of us, to get into that part of being a, a solution to this problem. But while we are solving that solution, let us go ahead and enjoy marriage because it's a good thing.